it easy to entertain the Welsh. <laughs> good, good, right. We've got, we've got some parents in the audience. Oh, oh yes, you can tell them. <laughs> How does he know? I don't know. How do you know? Because I am one, that's why. And uh, it's, I, I don't think it's ever been more difficult in the history of mankind to bring up kids. I really don't. And there's a lot of, yes, a lot of people going, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I mean, you love them to death, but they're a pain in the neck, aren't they? Just, <laughs> and it's all with you. I don't know, I just think there's so many outside influences that you, it's very difficult to, to control them. I, I mean, it, there's always something. Last week, my daughter came home with a yo-yo. I think his name was Gordon. <laughs> Six foot three troglodyte, you know, hair. <laughs> forehead that kept the rain off his feet, you know. <laughs> he was covered in greasy leathers and some oil, and like, I wouldn't mind, but he used the bus. <laughs> I've sat on sofas with a higher IQ than this guy. You know? <laughs> but it's always something with kids, and you, you, you're never quite prepared, are you? And uh, like, my son's passed his test, okay, and uh, now he wants a car, which is fair enough. Uh, but he wants something that he wants, you know, I mean, and he wants the business, hey, you know, racy, cool, yeah, not to 60 in three seconds, <laughs> sorted, bad, respect. <laughs> I want to buy him a second hand milk float. <laughs> when you pay the insurance premium, the whole of Eagle Star doesn't go on holiday to Barbados. <laughs> and of course, kids, if they can't get what they want, they know how to manipulate you. I mean, I don't know, they learn it on the internet or something, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, because he can't have the car he wants, I get, well, if I can't have the car I want, I'm saving up all my money and I'm going to buy a motorbike. You can buy a motorbike! The one word that instills fear into every parent's eye. A motorbike, please don't buy a motorbike! Visions of the Shangri-La singing leader of the pack at the memorial service. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, unfair to is he passed his test, which is, uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, no help from me, I have to say that, and because the, there's, a, there's a written part of the test, did you know that now? Yes. yes, he wanted me to help him with it, fat lot of use I was, wasn't it? <laughs> what do two solid white lines in the middle of the road mean? A challenge. <laughs> Who has right of way at a roundabout? Oh, that's easy, me. <laughs> Traffic lights. What comes after a single amber light? I don't know. I've never hung round long enough to find out. <laughs> Always something with kids. This, this time last year, this time last year, we had a French exchange student over. Oh, yes. Philippe. <laughs> 17 years old. I've got my me, me son going around the house grunting in English. Now I've got his mate grunting in French. Well, until a woman comes in the room, then it's, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Carrot, you look so beautiful tonight. Your eyes are so sparkly. Oh, thank you, Philippe. <laughs> it's so nice to be appreciated once in a while. <laughs> Oh, I stayed out of his way. I spent the week in the garden. That's how bad it was, you know. Oh, he found me eventually, you know. <laughs> Smoking them galwars. They smell like Gandhi's flip-flops. You know? <laughs> ah, Mr. Vegetable. <laughs> oh, hello, Philippe. Looking for some sheep to burn, are we? <laughs> Is this your shed, Mr. Vegetable? <laughs> yes, what you keep in your shed, Mr. Vegetable? Dead French exchange students. 
not my favourite people, I have to say that. And, uh, he, he wore his jumper like Frenchmen do, you know. <laughs> to hide the chip on each shoulder, that's what I mean. <laughs> oh, Ooh, I'd love to get my own back for them World Cup tickets, I'll tell you. Did you, did you try and get one? What a waste of time that was, wasn't it? Uh, hello, hello, uh, hello. <laughs> um, do you have any, any tickets for an England game? <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Britannique, ah, he wants a ticket for an England game. <laughs> After three and the trois bollocks. <laughs> but, uh, always something with kids. I, I always said I would, I would be different from my parents. I would not bring my children up like my parents brought up me. I would be liberal with a capital L. Oh, yeah. They would know right from wrong instinctively because of the way I brought them up. I wouldn't have to shout at them. I wouldn't have to chastise them. No. No. There's a pig. There's a pig. It's a nonsense. I do exactly what my parents did, you know, except the, the parameters change, that's all, you know. I'm saying to my daughter, Oi, if you're not in by 5am, there will be trouble. <laughs> my mum used to say to me, Don't go out without your cap. Don't go out without your cap. I'm saying to my daughter, Don't go out without your cap. <laughs> I send my son out with two condoms attached to a piece of string. <laughs> he goes up this arm here, <laughs> across the top and down. <laughs> yes, you might look stupid, but it'll save your life. <laughs> I used to pin him to the inside of his jacket. <laughs> But I don't know, I mean, and then when kids get to about 13, something happens to the brain, it flips over or something. I mean, and they, they uh, I don't know, they, they become from human beings into something else, isn't it? They, they, well, they don't speak English for a start, do they? Then <laughs> 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 you know two words, no and wallet. <laughs> wallet. Have you done your homework? No. <laughs> wallet. <laughs> Speak English! <laughs> I mean, they think anybody over 25 is plankton. <laughs> you shouldn't be on the earth for crying out loud. What are you doing on the earth that old? <laughs> the fact that you've got a wallet is the only reason you should be there, isn't it? Wally! <laughs> and you get very frustrated with them. The thing is, they, they don't see the irony of it. Do they? I mean, like, they're young, they're, they're, they've got all that energy, all that life, all that verb. And what do they do on a bright Saturday afternoon? They spend hours on end in a Burger King, staring out the window going, huh, he's sad. <laughs> when you try and communicate, you know, hi, how you doing? <laughs> Anything decent in the chart? <laughs> Listen, I'm a human being, I've got a brain! Talk to me for crying out loud, what's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, you think you know it all, don't you? You're 13 and you're worldly wise, I tell you what, you know sod all! I can do things you can't! What? <laughs> um, I can accept sweets from a stranger. I can put my trainers on without going down to the garage to blow them up. <laughs> 3 a.m. in the morning, I know the difference between the wardrobe and the lavatory. <laughs> I <didn't want> it. <laughs> I mean, like they're they're surly, they're rude, they're uncommunicative, they're spotty, and what do we do? We make them into shop assistants. <laughs> I'm not going into HMV again, it's a waste of time. <laughs> Ask for anything pre-take that and they look at you as if you've just dropped out of a dog's bottom. 
<laughs> you give them a credit card, they put it in the till and give you change. <laughs> and then you get home, you get home, and then you've got teenagers and you've got grandparents. And they both hate you. <laughs> they both, anything, their, their quest in life is to make your life miserable. Any, anything to make your life miserable. You turn the telly up to 17 million decibels. You know. <laughs> Neither of them have got a job. <laughs> both on drugs. <laughs> and, uh, and, like, and, and you have double standards with teenagers and, and uh, grandparents. Because, like, I mean, they do the same things, but you treat them differently. Well, you do. You know, Grandma comes home and she's had her hair dyed blue. You go, <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> you look 20 years younger. <laughs> your daughter comes home with green hair. Get down the hairdressers and wash that shit out of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have my body pierced, Dad? No. Granddad's had his body pierced. That was World War II. <laughs> slides down the banister, you give them a right rollicking. Next day, you're paying out £1,500 for a machine so Grandma can slide up the banister. <laughs> you can't wait. <laughs> 3 a.m. in the morning, Grandgad can't tell the difference between the wardrobe and the lavatory. <laughs> They're both in there at 3 o'clock, talking about Chumba Wumba, pissing on my shoes. <laughs> Me. Next day, that smells like a urinal, isn't it? <laughs> and teenagers and computers are against you. I went into my son's room the other day and the computer said, shh, he's coming. <laughs> I said, oh, no, I'm, I'm like most parents, I've got a computer. What a waste of time that is. You turn it on, it says insert password, I turn it off, that's it. <laughs> And then, of course, you have to come to terms with uh, sexual morals. I mean, this is, this is a nightmare in this day and age. I mean, you know, in the 60s, we were liberal, but blimey, we were nuns compared with what they're like today. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't want to get too personal about this or anything, but um, do, you, do you remember those sweets called love hearts? <laughs> sweets shaped like hearts with little messages on that you gave to your boyfriend and your girlfriend, you know, like, I love you. <laughs> Be mine. <laughs> You're my dreamboat. <laughs> Have you bought some lately? I'm gagging for it. <laughs> Tongue my box. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> That's something else you have to put up with, isn't it? Girl power, you see? I mean, women are so aggressive these days. And, um, well, they are. Like, I've, got a, I've got a great aunt, an old great aunt. She's 87. And I said to her, Auntie, are, are women more aggressive than what they used to be? She said, oh, bog off, you bald-headed twit. <laughs> My daughter's into the... Spice Girls, you know, and uh, she's got the pictures all over the bedroom. And, and, and this genuine headline from uh, the Sunday Sport, which she's very proud of, and it says, The Spice Girls made my son walk. And I thought, just one letter out. <laughs> but, I thought it was funny, you know. I said to my daughter, just one letter out. <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> and uh, you know, what, what letter? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. She, she was too busy putting on her orthopedic boots, you know. <laughs> when she puts them on, you have to go and phone air traffic control, you know. <laughs> How do I look, Dad? Hey, would you like a pair of calipers? <laughs> Straight over the top there. Too. You can't knock fashion, to be honest. It's like, uh, well, I used to wear winkle pickers. I mean, canoes on each foot. I used to queue up outside the Locarno in Birmingham. The queue would be about a mile long. There's only four of us in it.
Slacken your noose, hangman, slacken your noose, hangman, slacken your noose, cause I have la la la. Sick, aren't you? Me harmonica. <laughs> I just called to say. once who suffered with terrible asthma really wicked asthma and one night she had this obscene telephone call from this bloke and after 10 minutes he said did I call you or did you phone me? How can I tell you How much I'll miss you If you won't go away <laughs> Hang on a minute, hang on, hang on, that's it Don't go away <laughs> From a distance! home where the buffalo roam and I'll show you a house full of cow shit <laughs> found the level have we <laughs> unforgettable Was it you that did the pushing? Put the stain upon the cushion. <laughs> Footsteps on the dashboard upside down. <laughs> or was it you, you sly woodpecker? Got into my girl Rebecca. If it was, you'd better leave this town. <laughs> yes, was I that did the pushing? Put the stain upon the cushion. Footsteps on your dashboard upside down. But ever since I've had your daughter, I've had trouble passing water. <laughs> So I guess we're even all around. <laughs> Doing TV these days uh, is quite a dangerous profession, to be fair. It used to be fairly easy, but now... I don't know, people are more aggressive, not just women. Everyone's more aggressive and, and they're more intent on making their point and, uh, and by being vociferous, you can change things, you know. And, uh, I mean, I used to be able to do most things, but now you have to be very careful. Anything to do with, uh, you know, Christians or the Pope, I mean, you're in real trouble. It used to be easy, I mean, because they were Christians and nobody bothered to turn the other cheek. Now it's all these born-again Christians going, Oi! Oi, carrot! What's this? What's this about the Pope, eh? eh? Why don't you do jokes about the Muslims, eh? Because they'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
one joke about the Quran, I'm sharing a flat with Salman Rushdie. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you, I can still do sort of Jehovah's Witnesses things because they're lovely people, they really are. I mean, wow, well, they don't come banging on your door to complain, do they? <laughs> And, uh, oh, you, oh, it's all, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know, just things that you never think of. I, uh, I was talking about the Samaritans, and I said, uh, why don't they get sponsored? You know, Nike would be great. Right? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> they phoned me up. Gave me a right roasting, you know. I became so depressed, I phoned them back. <laughs> We found out they were already sponsored by Commercial Union. We won't make a drama out of a crisis. <laughs> and all sorts of things, uh, like the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man, all that very sensitive about interbreeding. <laughs> I just said there was a bloke there who was his own father. <laughs> it's no coincidence, the coat of arms is three legs. <laughs> and I'll never be able to go to Eastbourne again. <laughs> God's waiting room. <laughs> they don't have deck chairs on the front. They have thousands of multicoloured commodes. <laughs> and uh, on oh, Friday night in Eastbourne, it's full of saga louts. <laughs> There's a branch of next in Eastbourne. It's a funeral parlour. <laughs> Anything, if you do anything to do with afflictions, oh, oh, you, there's just a, oh, you can't believe it. Last year I did that sketch about Alzheimer's and uh, the envelopes I got. <laughs> I had two notes for the milkman and that was it. <laughs> And I'll never do anything about stutters again, because they, when they get hold of you, I mean, you're there for hours. <laughs> and you get drenched as well. <laughs> I did that thing about dyslexics and the letters I got for that. <laughs> Door Jasker Parget. <laughs> Love us exiliads along, you winker. Yours fully faith. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, I just, my philosophy is just laugh at life, you know, if you've got afflictions, laugh at them. The more you can laugh at life, I think the easier it is to get through. That's, that's me personally. I mean, laughter is the best medicine, right? Yes. yes. Well, unless you're diabetic and then insulin comes pretty high. <laughs> The last thing you want to be is in a diabetic coma in the middle of the street and some bloke coming up going, these two Irishmen walked into a pub. <laughs> <laughs> any chance of any sugar? No. <laughs> There's another joke. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've got loads of afflictions and stuff. Um, <laughs> well, uh, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very good with blood. You know, you know how people are sort of like, you know, a bit, bit wary about sort of needles or you know, frightened of spiders? With me, it's blood. And um, particularly my own. <laughs> but no, if I see blood, uh, I, I, go, I go all white and wobbly. And uh, which is, uh, I mean, generally speaking, if you see blood, people are in trouble. Uh, and, and I'm legging it down the road. You know? <laughs> well, I'm a good mate to have me. <laughs> no, it gets you into all sorts of trouble. I remember, I remember when my first child was being born. Uh, and I was in the maternity unit helping me missus out, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I was in the maternity unit <laughs> helping my missus out. No, no, you're a strange crowd there. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was holding a hand and mopping a brow, you see, and doing the things that you do. And, uh, and I was a bit concerned, because I know it gets a bit messy, you know. And, uh, and I said to the midwife, I said, excuse me, um, I'm not very good with blood. She said, oh, 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 you've got a problem. I said, yes, I know. Uh, what can I do? She said, well, it's not a problem. She said, we're well staffed, and uh, if you feel uncomfortable, just leave, you know, and we'll call you when it's all over. I said, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so got a bit wobbly, and, and I left. 
And I come back about an hour later, they gave me the baby, and I thought, oh, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> Had a few more of these, not a problem. <laughs> and a few years later, another kid was being bought, and I was in the maternity unit helping my missus again. And they're uh, good. And, <laughs> and um, it got to the sort of the messy stage, and uh, I said to the midwife, I said, uh, excuse me, um, I, I always leave now. I said, why? I I'm not very good with blood. Said, oh, that's a shame, because you're staying. <laughs> I don't think that's a very good... You're staying! <laughs> you're short-staffed. Do you understand? If your wife can go through the pain and misery of childbirth, the least you can do is stay and hold her hand. <laughs> 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 So I had to stay, you see, and, uh, and I wasn't looking, I couldn't look, I couldn't look, and uh, oh, it was all going on, lots of funny noises and squelching, all that sort of business. <laughs> and, um, but it, it's a bit like a road accident, you've got to have a look, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I just collapsed on the floor. <laughs> and all the nurses were getting home, me, trying to get this baby out, you know. And uh, I woke up just in time to see the afterbirth coming out. <laughs> and I thought, what an ugly bastard. And I heard the midwife say, he looks just like his dad. <laughs> Thank you. Good night.